He transfers 16. Why we use the film temperature and not the water temperature when looking up the values? From my understanding in the video answer, it's because the it's the instant the plate turns on, the water is at 60 degrees and the plate's at 140. So we need to find the film temperature. Yes, I was able to solve the problem except for that detail. And I'm still a little confused why we need the film water properties instead of the 60 degree properties. Like the steam tables, I'm able to navigate the problem except I'm pulling the wrong data. Yeah, it's frustrating. I, I feel your pain. Um, I guess the best thing to take away from, from this experience is just to sort of reclassify how convection heat transfer problems are, are going to proceed in the future when, when you solve similar problems to this. It's very typical that, I mean, in an, in an ideal case, or if you're lucky, uh, the problem statement will give you H the convection heat transfer coefficient for that particular situation. And if it does, you know, I think you know what to do, right? It's gonna be something like Q equals HA delta T. But again, we don't wanna get in the habit of just grabbing the right formula and plugging and chugging. So what's a more interesting problem that you could get? And some of those heat transfer problems are, are a bit too hard. So don't worry if, there, if it's just like a lot of work to do in one problem, as long as you understand the individual steps, that's probably fine. Um, but just to go over the, the process, whether it's natural convection or forced convection, really the, the central idea of a lot of these convection problems is finding H because once you find H, right, the rest is, is just rolling the snowball down the hill. Um, but finding H is often not easy because it depends on how we're classifying the problem. Is it forced convection? Is it natural convection? Um, you know, what's, what's the temperature and this issue of film temperature comes up. So, um, usually it has something to do with the new salt number, which is HD over K, or sometimes it's HL over K, depending on the geometry where H is the, um, convection heat transfer coefficient. K is the thermal conductivity and D is either the diameter or some unit length for the particular geometry that you're dealing with. And then how do you find the Nusselt number? Well, the Nusselt number is going to be a function of the Rayleigh number. And how do you find the Rayleigh number? That's going to be a function of a bunch of different properties of water, such as the volumetric coefficient of thermal expansion, the kinematic viscosity, and the Prandtl number. Now, some of these numbers might be given, or they might give you a table to look it up. Um, but the key is that those values should be collected at the film temperature. So what about this film temperature? <laughs> In this particular problem, it was a situation with um, a water bath and there was a plate, a hot plate that had just turned on to some temperature. And the moment the plate turns on, it has some surface temperature of uh, 140 degrees and the bulk water temperature is only 60 degrees. So now when it comes time to look up the, um, these properties, we're meant to use not 60 and not 140. The answer is somewhere in between because imagine what I like to imagine is that it's actually the water molecules that are approaching this contact surface of the hot plate. And you know, a moment ago they were 60, but now they're up against this plate that's 140. They don't immediately get heated to 140. It takes some time. So the answer is probably somewhere in between. So that, that's as far as my intuition takes it. And then it's like, well, how are heat transfer problems typically solved? Like what are the fundamental assumptions behind this? And it turns out that all they do is just take the average. And that's where the notion of film temperature comes in. In this case, it's going to be the 60 plus 140 over two. I know that seems a bit unscientific and it's like, really, at the end of all of that, that's what we do. Yeah, that's what we do. So um, since it's not that hard to do, it's just a matter of remembering it. Then I say, fine, film temperatures, um, let's do it. Now, you might get a bit lucky in the sense that the Prandtl number doesn't change very much. It's usually like 0.7 or 0.71 or 0.72. So you can kind of just ignore that and pick one of those. Um, 
the kinematic viscosity will change as a function of temperature. So you want to actually look that up if you can, uh, or if it's not given. And the coefficient of thermal expansion, volumetric thermal expansion, I find it's not even really given in the reference handbook. So I think that would have to be given. Um, in my example problems for you guys, I gave you the table from, from the mechanical engineering reference manual, which you won't have, um, because I wanted you to be able to look them up for yourself. But um, yeah, I mean, and, and in terms of simplifying these problems, there's a lot of ways they can make it easier. They could tell you the film temperature, they could tell you the uh, Rayleigh number, or they could tell you these constants that go into the Rayleigh number, or they could tell you the Nusselt number. It's a matter of like how much work they want to make you do and you know what part. So that's, that's the name of the game is to identify what this problem is asking and just drill down on the part that needs to be answered. I've given you probably four or five pretty deep examples, which you know taken together is enough there for uh, many different pro types of problems to be written. So if you can if you can get through those steps, then um, you've got enough of a sense of what you need for heat transfer that you should be okay.